feel like one of those um, old comedians or some of the old actors who only have three stories that everybody asks and, and they tell, and I don't even know what's true anymore except for the, the rote response I always get. But actually, the Ghostbusters trail is a fairly logical one because it started in animation. It started with heavy metal. The path uh, from Ghostbusters to the cartoon show Ghostbusters made more sense than you think because my path to Ghostbusters started with heavy metal. And I went to work for Ivan with heavy metal. Uh, I can say it now, pretending I knew about animation when I knew very little. I faked my way in. But Ivan and I had some history uh, going back to the National Lampoon days. And basically, I got some attached to heavy metal for very long, too long a story until it happened. But when Ivan did the film, I said, well, I can art direct it. I can protect this work to look right on screen and then I can draw. And, you know, I, I went to art school. I have a design background. And he trusted me to guard the kind of animation side of it. And within that, because it was a feature film, we actually dabbled in a lot of pretty low level special effects. So when that was over, I consulted on some special effects for a movie that no one ever saw and we will mention for Ivan. And when Ghostbusters were coming, Suddenly, it was a special effects film, which, and there's a lot more crossover between animation and special effects than one usually thinks, because a lot of special effects work is animation. And I knew enough to then become kind of the designer of new creatures and help with special effects and get the special effects done for Ghostbusters the movie. And logically, when that was over, when there was going to be an animated show, then I really did know everything there was to know about animation, and it was a piece of cake. It was in the script. Danny Aykroyd had it written on the page that the boys came in with this logo on their shirt or on the side of the automobile of a ghost trapped in the no symbol. That was it. So the first thing we had to do was do it for set dressing and props and all the rest. And because we had this wonderful effects house going, doing all the special effects, filled with all these artists, one of whom was Brent Boats, who was one of the major artists on heavy metal. Um, I just went to Brent and I said, give me variations on a ghost coming through the no symbol. And he drew it up and there we were. I took the drawings dive and said, fine, brought the art department. We didn't think twice about it. No one really thought it was going to go past that. And, um, and then, of course, as everything grew and the advertising campaign came, it became the logo for the film. But we didn't know it was going to go past being on the side of the building around people's clothing when we did it. The interesting thing about it is, it's hard for people to figure this out, is one of the versions I did had Ghostbusters written in the diagonal sign, and it doesn't read well the way the actual symbol is. So I flopped it so that it reads the other way. And the reason I did that is that symbol was not used in the United States when we started Ghostbusters. And just when the film came out, we started using it in the States. Of course, it's been in Europe forever. So if you ever see it, then we took the word Ghostbusters off it, but it's still backwards. But if you ever see it the correct way, that's for European release. Because they said, look, we can't run it backwards over here. We've been using it for 50 years, you know. So it's two ways. If you see it backwards, it's US. If you see it the correct way, it's the European. For those who don't know about merchandising, which in those days was largely toy lines, etc., when the movie came out, we couldn't 